WGU, very interesting school. Um, you know, I did a video about a year back where I told people to, you know, kind of avoid online schools if possible with a few exceptions. And one of the exceptions that I mentioned was WGU. Now, a lot has happened since then in the world since I did that video. Uh, pretty much all schools are online at this point. So I think uh, oh, yeah. that kind of calls for a little bit of an update um, maybe here in the next few months. But um, let me know about WGU. What was your experience like with uh, WGU? Sure. So I, I had kind of seen it online quite a bit before I actually enrolled in it. And I, I was a member of this forum. It used to be called Tech Exams. Uh, I think it's called like, I forget what it's called now, in BOSEC something community. Um, but anyway, I, I kind of watched it for like a couple of years and I, I kind of figured what it was about, at least the IT degree portion of it. Basically, like with WGU, you, you pay for a semester at a time. So you pay for like six months, or I guess they call it a term. And then you can complete, like whatever you can complete in that six months is fair game. So basically the idea is um, what, what I did and like what a lot of people do is they'll, they'll register and they'll enroll and then they'll just try to do as many classes as, as they can. They'll be like really disciplined about it and just knock out as many classes as they can, like kind of thus decreasing the time it takes to get a bachelor's degree and then kind of decreasing the amount that you end up paying for tuition. And it, it's really good. Um, you can pretty much get out of it as much as you want. Because uh, it's it's regionally accredited, and a lot of the curriculum are industry recognized certs from like CompTIA, for example, or Cisco or ISC squared. Um, so, like some of the classes will be like to pass this class, you need to get your CompTIA A plus certificate. So it, it works out really well, especially for IT, because by the time you graduate, you'll have like a bunch of cert certificates already and a bachelor's degree. So it, it's pretty nice. Um, uh, so yeah, I had, that's pretty much what I did. I tried to like complete. A lot of the certs before I actually enrolled, so I, I could kind of compress the time that I spent actually enrolled to doing WG work, and then once I enrolled, I just tried to like bang it, bang out the degree as fast as I could. Hey guys, Shane from the future. Really quickly, I wanted to say that there are a few resources down in the description. It'll be at the very top that I think are good when it comes to IT. One of them is going to be a certification that is very common and it's a good way to kind of dip your toe into IT and see if it's the right thing for you. And it can also help you to get an entry level job or maybe an internship. And then the other one is a website that allows you to quickly test out of different classes at a fraction of the cost at study.com. So definitely check out both of those down in the description below. Got it. So yeah, um, I would say, you know, I haven't looked into all WGU degrees, so I'm not saying that, you know, everybody watching this video should go there. But I would say from from the research I've done, there are certain degrees where WGU would be a great option because you could get it done in maybe, you know, six months to a year, and it would hold the same weight as a four year degree from somewhere else and it would also be a lot cheaper. So that is an option for some people to look into, you know, make sure to do your own research, never believe someone on the internet, make sure to do your research for yourself. <laughs> so so for it's sure. a good option for you. <laughs> but, uh, I can say that uh, out of the online school options, that does seem by far like one of the best options I've heard. Mostly I would say like 99% positive reviews uh, from people who have, have gone there. So. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for uh, talking about that. That was, uh, I think I might actually make a video on them at some point. We'll see. Yeah, people search, people search it a lot. So let's say that somebody doesn't really have any experience in IT, but they are interested in getting into it. How would they go about getting into the field? I, I actually made like a whole video on this uh, and I kind of talked about it a little bit in this, in this interview, but people can always kind of make their own experience, like a portfolio, I guess, if you will. Um, so for example, I guess the best way to explain this would be if um, like a lot of computer science majors, like when they graduate and they want to go into software engineering, um, in addition to their degree, they'll kind of make a portfolio, like they'll build some applications or like a web app or something. And they'll create like a GitHub where potential employers can like go and look at their the stuff they made and kind of maybe get a feel for like how how good they are, I guess, or the different technologies they've worked in. So you can kind of take that same concept and apply it to information technology or cybersecurity or like kind of whatever field you're trying to get into. So for example, if you want to get into IT, you might look at some technologies that are like really in use today. And like a lot of businesses, like 
Uh, Active Directory is pretty much used everywhere. And then maybe Azure, like Azure AD or any concepts within Azure or AWS, because that's pretty much like a lot of businesses use that. And then um, you can take, for example, like Active Directory and kind of like create some content around it, like maybe a blog post or like a cheap YouTube video or something and kind of showcase your skills, like set up the environment, like create some users, use PowerShell or something like this. And like take that and then publish it like on your LinkedIn or like your YouTube or blog or wherever. And then you can put it on your resume as well. And that kind of becomes like uh, experience because it, it, it works really well because um, if the employer wants to, you can put links on your resume, by the way, because it's, it's 2021 and they can go and look at it. And it's kind of like tangible, tangible evidence as to like how, how good you are, sh like show them that you worked with this specific technology. So it's a, re a really good way to kind of generate experience for yourself um, if you don't have experience yet. So I would, I would highly recommend anyone do that. It's like super powerful and it's really underutilized, especially getting your first job. So. I, I totally agree. I think that's like kind of an out of the box way of doing it. And, you know, when it comes to uh, applying to certain jobs, a lot of the time, the best thing that you can do is kind of stand out a little bit. You know, uh, yeah. what, what a lot of people try to do, I think, and I think this is true for some things, it's good to not stand out in certain areas uh, for some yeah. things. But um, when it comes to like showcasing your skills and projects and that sort of thing, uh, I think it's a great idea to stand out. So you know, some things I've seen people do is make videos, like like uh, record a video of themselves, kind of pitching themselves to companies, for instance. Um, yeah. and it kind of it kind of just demonstrates to the company that you are someone who thinks outside of the box. You're able to uh, not only showcase the skill, but do it in a very creative way. And you know what that tells me, for instance, if I'm a hiring manager or a business owner, is that you're going to be very flexible and you're going to be able to learn stuff on the fly that kind of demonstrates that to me. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, I would absolutely agree with that, absolutely. Got Your it. video froze, oh, okay, it fixed, it fixed itself. <laughs> Again, sorry guys, if you, if you saw that, I don't know if I'm gonna cut <laughs> that out or not. Um, I'm having some internet issues here. <laughs> it's raining outside, so. <laughs> uh, thank you again for your patience, Josh, appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no problem. We're having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, very important question. This is a personal finance channel after all. And I always like to say this guys, money is not everything, but it is important. You know, uh, you don't want to be doing stuff for free. So, and this is a personal finance channel. This is what a lot of the people came for. So, uh, what kind of a pay can you expect, uh, getting into the IT field, uh, both right off the bat and then maybe, you know, a few years down the line? So this is a great question. Um, it, it kind of depends on where you live a little bit, a little bit, um, but for the most part, it, getting into the field, you can you can expect maybe around between like 40 to 55K for like a help desk, for a help desk job, and maybe much more than that in metropolitan areas, but just starting off, it'll probably, probably be somewhere around 50K or something like this. And you, you'll kind of notice um, as, you, as you go through your career, um, this is just my opinion. So kind of take it with a grain of salt. Um, like the more you have, the more you have to do things that are like creative. Um, so for example, like, uh, if you're somebody who follows process, for example, and, and just does stuff for the business, like help desk and like closing tickets, your salary, salary will be like a little bit lower than somebody who like defines process like somebody who writes procedures for like the help desk people to do or somebody who like designs the network versus somebody who just like fixes uh, like an out, like a simple outage or something like this. It depends. Um, so kind of the more you get it, you transition into like defining process and like designing stuff. And like the more you get closer to like dealing with people, like um, organizing like projects and that kind of stuff, your pay like tends to go up a little bit. Um, and also, the more you change jobs, the, how can I say, like, this isn't a hard rule, but generally, the more you change jobs, the faster your salary will go up. So for example, um, for me, I, I made a, I, sorry, to, I'm not trying to like shill my videos, but I, I made a video that like outlines my whole like career and my salary progression. And if you, if you look at that, there was like one period of time where I, I worked uh, at the same job for about seven years or something. And my salary went something like, um, 50k to 52k to 54k to 57k to like 60k like every year and it's like it's pretty it's pretty slow um, but when you 
if you make an effort to like upgrade your skills and like change jobs, it'll be more something like 50k to like, you know, 65k to like 77k to like 90k, it will like, it, it tends to jump like quite a bit. So um, the more you get to like, the closer another kind of rule of thumb is like the closer you get to the business uh, end of things, the more your salary goes up. So for example, um, I'm like a I, I don't like my job right now, but I'm a program manager, like cybersecurity program manager. And um, I, I have some technical aspects, but my job kind of um, involves a lot of uh, orchestrating of other humans and um, making sure the, the business, I guess, is compliant. So it, it tends to have like a, a higher salary. My salary right now is like 130K. Um, so I, I guess just... Um, depends on like what you want to do. If you want to do like hard technical stuff and you don't want to like interface with people like that, that much, it, it, it may possibly be lower than if you work with management and like business and stuff, but starting out 50 K and then kind of the, the upper end without getting into like C-suite pay, it's going to be like maybe like 150 K. And then to breach 150 K, you have to do some like, um, real like hard stuff like principal like software engineer or something like this or like a cto or 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 something like this or you know work in san francisco i, I suppose but I, I hope that answer was like kind of all over the place but hopefully it gives uh, like a sense of what the pay is like yeah that that's a great answer um i would say just uh generally one thing i've heard in the tech field you know moving to silicon valley you're gonna have a lot of opportunity high pay there tech computer science etc there's some other places that are kind of in the middle. They're not necessarily maybe as expensive as Silicon Valley, but they still have decently high pay. And again, from what I've heard, New York, Seattle, maybe Austin would be some, some other decent options there for uh, you know, getting some experience and getting up to that high pay grade. And then maybe later on down the line, after you've gotten that experience, you can kind of move wherever you want. Would you say that's kind of a, a good idea? Yeah, definitely. Definitely agree with with everything you said there. <laughs>